What's up, Tube Tube? Welcome back to Woodlock Quido's Chop Shop, second best gel blaster channel on the tubes. And today I have a large box. I always do these like big reveals where I like have the empty box and then I open it up so we can see what's inside. But I mean, you guys have already read the video title, so you know what it is. So I don't know why I bother doing this. Um, this is from GBU, as you can see. Uh, I am going to open this up. Now that is a healthy amount of packaging. Now, I just, I don't know, it's suspended in there nicely. A lot of the time I get stuff that's just like, I don't know, really weak packaging and... Uh, hey! There's a gilly, the little bat, what? This a spare gear set. I've never, ever, 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 ever in my life received a blaster with a spare gear set. That's a first. That is a first. Alright. Um, I'm going to pull this out of the cardboard and get it on the table. As you can see, if you can't see. It is a G36K. So uh, let me let me crack that out and we'll see it on the table. All right. So straight out of the box, I am getting vibes of the UMP45. Uh, probably because it's also a HK with uh, like similar features, but um, just the the feel of the. Uh, the nylon that it's made out of and uh, everything it's, it's seems very very similar to the uh, to the UMP45 in construction uh, maybe a, even a little bit higher quality and I mean I was always a huge fan of the um, UMP when it came out it was pretty groundbreaking this blaster has been manufactured by 3DG who are the same people who uh, who brought us the um, <laughs> the uh, electric blowback lock recently? Uh, that's why you also notice that it comes with the same set of safety goggles, um, which I am going to. I, I promised I would shoot them with something, uh, and I, I I still will do that at some stage. I just just haven't got around to it yet. But they do look better than most goggles that I've seen that come free in the packet with uh, with blasters, I usually just throw them out. But these ones do look like I'd... I'll test them and I'd even consider using them, uh, unlike some others. The mag, nice and solid. It looks like a... Um, like it's a translucent plastic. I, I don't know the exact type, but it's quite solid, like a... I don't know, I'm not a plastics guru, but like a um, Perspex type stuff, I don't, I don't know what it's actually called technically. Um, nylon, very nice nylon. Fairly solid construction. Like I said, very, very closely uh, in quality, very close to what we saw in the, in the UMP. Now, I'm having a look, we've got the folding stock there, um, you can see that it's actually got, I actually like this, this is kind of, kind of cute, let me show you this, it's actually got the engravings here, um, G36K, obviously the, the G36C and the G36K uh, have basically the same lowers and just the the K is longer in in the uh, in the in the front end so it looks like the 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 actual model number is molded into the casting for for this receiver and then they've just sort of laser etched the K on to the one that they fitted with the longer <laughs> the longer handguard and barrel um, I don't know if these are actual serial numbers or not but um, 
but uh, yeah they're also laser etched in at the same same time I'd say now it uh, comes with some rails for the front here front bottom and the two sides and the bottom uh, obviously it's got the built-in rail across the top as well I these are plastic and and uh, and they have inserts they have threaded inserts that they thread into I'm a, I'm a fan of that uh, I mean given the most recent blasters that we've been getting I'd be surprised to, to not have threaded inserts these days I remember in the early days I was always excited when I saw real hardware with real inserts because it was always you know just self tapped into plastic so so inserts and hardware is is a is a plus in my books spare gear set I'm still <laughs> I'm still I've never seen that I'm still kind of blown away by the fact they give you a spare gear set I don't know if that's a good sign or not but either way spare gear set you can't can't go wrong there now I want to load this up and get a baseline uh, so we know what we're comparing here uh, I don't know where the battery goes because I, I had a look in the stock here and there was no place for the battery in the stock so the only other logical place I can assume is in the front here somewhere so front hand guard off there we go there is a spot for the battery uh, looks like it has the silver wiring and the JSTSM connector which I know a lot of people don't like because it's uh, a bit limited in current capacity but I do like it because it means that all the batteries that I have laying around will fit I don't have to change the connections on anything which is cool um, so I'll just find myself a battery and it's going to be 11 volts because that's what I use. I don't generally use any 7 volt batteries so hopefully this thing goes good on 11s. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, they gave me a spare gear set so <laughs> we'll see. So it looks like the battery has to sort of maybe tuck up tuck up in there and then the handguard comes over the top, oh yeah that fits nicely in there um, and pin oh, that was a bit weird Mag seems to have like a little bit of a rock to it. But, oh, we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to load it up with standard milkies again. It's got one of those break your thumbnail mag fillers. Why? Someone actually, someone actually told me they keep a um, they keep a guitar pick in their uh, kit so they can open these things um, on the field just seems why why is every new blaster <laughs> why can't I get... I want to get to the mag Um, bear with me. Hey, speaking of guitar picks, here's one that happens to be on my bench. You've got to be kidding me. Come on. All right. That was way more difficult than it needed to be. Let's get some gels in this thing. Standard milkies, as I said. I always um, do my tests on standard milkies. Uh, I know there are better gels out there, but just for the sake of 
comparative purposes, I always use just the standard milkies so that everyone's on the same playing field. I do like that you can see the gels in the mag. Um, gives you an idea of how much is left, how much is in the mag. There's actually quite a few fit in this mag. Um, it's pretty cool. Alright, let's try it out. It's got a um, charging handle here. I don't know if that works. Guess not. No, no mag prime. Alright. Alright, straight out of the box. Let's see how we go. Now this does have an ambidextrous fire select, funnily enough. Um, it does feel a little bit janky, but I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, 174, 184, 188, 180. All right, that was that was full auto. It doesn't know whether it wants to be in full auto or uh, semi for some reason. Alright, I'll try full auto. It does seem to have a decent sort of fire rate on it, but when you go full auto, it doesn't seem to be feeding all that well. Let's try semi. Semi also wants to be full. So, 189 out of the box, not super duper impressive in the power department. So I'm just going to show you what I mean uh, about the fire selector being a little bit weird here. So it is ambidextrous, so you've got, um, you know, you've got this side here, or this side here and that does actually that does actually work um, so that's safe you see safe now if you listen for the first click there's the first click it's still safe you go sort of progress a little bit fast past the first click and then you get semi although semi is not always semi I'm getting two shots. So semi is just a roulette as to whether you get semi or burst. That's a that's a cutout lever issue that's common in a lot of V2 slash J9 style boxes. It's it's not that uncommon. Uh, just means that the uh, cutoff lever isn't pulling the trolley off the top of the trigger properly. Could be for a number of reasons. Might be easy enough to fix and then obviously full auto. And let me just show you on the on the ambi on the other side. So you can actually go safe. Semi. And then full. Um, the ejection port does Open when you pull the charging handle. Uh, that's about all that does. Alright, um, for what it's worth, I did uh, scrounge around through somebody's garbage bin and I found one of these 7 volt batteries. I'll plug that in. And you can probably see now, with that 7 volt battery, which is probably what I guess it's designed to come with, the uh, Semi function works a bit better. Although the fire rate is pretty dismal on 7 volts. I guess it's okay, but I generally don't run anything 7 volts these days. But um, there you go. I mean, obviously the 11 volt 
battery runs it just that little bit faster enough that it wants to jump over the cutout lever um, yeah that's a thing it can be fixed it's one of those things I think most of these type of mechanical cutoff blasters have issues with I guess uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is pull it all apart let's get down all right let's get into it um, as we know this pin here Pops the front handguard off. I've already taken the battery out. Um, top rail looks like it's held on by these three screws. Uh, I don't even know if I have to take that off, but I'm taking it off anyway. Because I want to. Because I feel like it. That's what I do. Alright, so three screws out. special little washers as well. Maybe worth taking a note of. I um I wonder if the high optic sight um I don't know what it's called technically but the 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 higher rail that you can get for the G36 would fit onto this that would be cool, I think. Um, Alright, the I'll take the stock off because that looks like it's probably just a pin to punch out. Yes. Nice pin. Nice and big. Um, you can, if you just want to up the spring, you can actually just access the spring just from the folding stock, which is um, which is handy. Just just in here, you can get that out if you need to. Okay. What comes next? Looks like this is a pin. Hmm. It's pretty cool. You can now see the gearbox. It's blue. I don't know that I've seen a blue gearbox before. You can also see the um, the barrel in there. It looks like a alloy barrel. Also kind of cool. There's a pin here. It's actually a, a, a Allen Allen head screw. Three millimeter. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, so this side is also a screw, yet it is a two and a half millimeter, while the other side is a Three millimeter. Interesting. Now it appears the barrel is held in with this two millimeter screw at the front here. And this one. Alright, there it is. So, those two pins, or 
bolts, screws in the front there. They hold the barrel assembly in place. There's the barrel assembly. It's kind of cool. I um I also I'm a fan of these springs here as well, which sort of force the T piece back into the gearbox in these um types of gearboxes that don't have the um T pieces fixed to the gearbox, which is quite common these days. Alright, so now let's see if this upper comes off. Hey, there we go. Okay, so it looks like this comes down and then forward. Ah, there we go. That was easier than expected. And now we see the box. Uh, oh, that's kind of cool. So, top of the box here has uh, some sort of blowback feature built in. Um, not necessarily for this blaster, but maybe for other versions. Uh, this piece will certainly reciprocate and there is a screw hole on the top of it. Um, so that's kind of cool. It kind of looks like a V3 box to me. Or at least something similar to. Also has a nice big nozzle for gel which is good. I like it. like big nozzles. None of this 6mm stuff. Now, if it is a V3, which I think it is, this big main screw should release the whole thing. So I'll give that a shot first. Uh, failing that, we, we might try the two smaller screws on the side. But, hoping for just the one. I have had a lot of people comment why don't you get yourself a screw tray um, I do have a screw tray just don't always use it Okay, it's taken some wiggling and jiggling, but I'm finally, finally getting it out. There's a spring here, which I think is... What are you even for? I don't know what that's for. I'll find out later though. Alright, after much wiggling and jiggling, finally got this box out. Alright, there it is. Oh, that's interesting. The, uh, the motor cage is not quite what I expected. Slightly different. Um, but doing the job. Alright. So quite a solid looking gearbox. Nylon. It's blue. Alloy cylinder. Uh, looks like it's got an alloy... Uh, 
let's open it up. Let's open it up. Alright, start by getting this motor cage off. Terminals off the motor. Not surprised to find nylon gears in here because of the price point of this blaster. I uh, would be fairly surprised to find metal gears for that matter. But uh, I will pop this apart. Um, this is a interesting little. Um, looks like a G thirty six specific pin holding plate. We will pop the spring out of this thing before we open it up uh, which is always a good idea seems like a reasonably standardish spring maybe I'll pop something in there that's a bit bit heavier duty see what happens um, let's see, get this box open, hey? Ah, and of course it is a V3, so it does have this um, plate on the top of this, which you have to knock off uh, with a screwdriver. Um, you've seen me do that before, surely, just sort of uh, in this direction. Uh, I'm just going to do it off camera because it's so much easier to uh, do it off camera. <laughs> So once you've knocked it past that little notch there, it does just slide forward. Um, and then we have this little plate that I was halfway through removing. Finish that off. It is spring loaded, so don't lose the spring. Lots of little spring parts on this blaster. And of course, Phillips head. Because we like to change standards halfway through a build. Alright, that looks like. like all of the screws make sure there's none hiding on the other side oh, all right let's pop this open pop this little um 
cap off first. Wants to fight me every step of the way, this one. And there it goes. Alright, and finally we get to look at what's inside. Obviously, uh, no surprises, there is a nylon gear set in here. It does look to be the, uh, the whiter nylon which is usually sort of representative of the lower quality nylon. Usually if you get a um, sort of like a stronger, more fibrous nylon, it's more of a yellow colour. Um, check the plunger. The, um, it's nylon as well, obviously. Plunger design looks kind of cool. I like this. I like that design. I've not seen that one before. Uh, fairly standard looking head. Let's check the compression. Mm, not awesome. Ah. That is. Yeah, interesting. So, the O ring itself has got good compression. Quite good compression. Not 100%, but quite good. Uh, but the, the head, the nozzle, sorry, the nozzle is, the nozzle leaks like a sieve. Um, yeah, let's see if I can find a different nozzle to replace this with. So the o-ring that comes on this is not too bad, but the head, um, I've noticed The holes, or lack thereof, are, are really, really tiny. So I'm going to drill them out to about three or four millimeters, because um, I think that's I think it's pulling some vacuum. All right, so I've uh, drilled those holes out. Green O-ring, uh, a bit of oil on the O-ring. Just work it in and. We've got a much better compression. Uh, as you can see there, um, hopefully that helps the performance. But we still have this issue here of the nozzle. Um, the nozzle is leaking like a sieve. And um, While it is a standard Gen 8 type nozzle, um, don't have, oh, actually, oh, I just chucked on, I just grabbed a standard Gen 8 nozzle out of my box and just the compression on the standard Gen 8 nozzle is already like a hundred times better than the compression on the on on this, well, compression, if you can call it that. All right, all right, I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna chuck a standard gen out because I don't have any um, O-ringed nozzles on me. Ideally, o ring nozzle would be uh, would be better. Um, that's what we would want. But I don't, this is free. It's here. I've got it, and I'm just gonna chuck it on. I'm gonna chuck a little bit of grease on this um, uh, nozzle as well. Uh, you know, just for grease. Uh, so, you chuck some grease on here. The grease is going to help lube that nozzle up. It also might help 
uh, a little bit with providing a little bit of extra seal where there's where there's no o-ring there um, won't last forever obviously but can't hurt certainly better than it was all right uh, I, I'm also I'm also convinced that the spare set of gears that comes shipped is better than the gears that are in there so I am I'm just gonna swap them I'm just gonna one for one them um, yep Oh, interesting, there's some shims on that. I will have to re recheck the shimming, obviously, um, after I've changed these gears. Because different gears mean different shimming. But I'll check that out. Alright, I'm happy with that shimming. While we're here, I'm just going to take a quick measurement of the barrel. Uh, 7.5 ID. And the length is... 33. 33 to the T. The spring, I've had to break out the old low guido scale because uh, I had no uh, reference on the spring. So I'm measuring 8.8 8 .9 on the low guido scale on that spring. Uh, which from memory puts it about the range of a standard Gen 8 spring. i got another little spring here that's uh, measuring about 11. So this is, if anyone cares, it's a 1.3 and the one that came out of it is a 1.2. So I know that tells you nothing about the spring, but just so you know. Alright, I'm going to put this back together. Uh, uh, with the new bits that I've done, um, you guys don't want to watch that, I'll do it off camera and then by the time you've blinked, this will be back together. Alright, we got it back together, we got the chrono box on the table, let's see how we went. All right, here we go. Ah, now we're talking. Oh, and we just squeezed a little 304 in there. <coughs> Won't tell anyone. It's field legal. 289. 298s. So, good, good improvement. Alright, so, average of 285. Uh, there was a low one in there at 190 and a high one at 304 but average of you know around we were, we were just on just under 300 that is a good little improvement and that is now a worthwhile blaster 
I was, I gotta say, I was a little disappointed when, when I first pulled this out of the box because I kind of been wanting uh, a uh, G36K for some time and when I saw this one I was hoping it was going to be the G36 that I'd been waiting for but I was a little bit disappointed when I first saw the performance out of the box. Um, but with a little bit of, you know, mild upgrades that uh, you know, anyone with a little bit of nous can uh, perform. We're in the ballpark of a skirmishable blaster. I will say that this was one of the more difficult takedowns of a blaster that I've that I've had any time recently. Um, the way it came apart was confusing. Uh, in sections and if anyone can tell me what the heck this button is for please let me know in the comments because I got no idea what that's for but it's there um, <laughs> anyway thanks for watching don't forget to buy me a coffee there will be a link down below also I do have patches available if you want to hit me up on the Facebook peace out guys